Hey, thank you so much for clicking on the video. Before we get started, there is a major shift coming to the channel come the beginnings of May, but fret not, I will be very active and streaming regularly on Twitch. So if you have not created an account yet and followed me over on my Twitch channel, that is Dark Spider David for the username. So it's twitch.tv slash Dark Spider David. We're currently holding a goal of 50 followers, so if you can help out with that by checking out the channel, uh, checking out uh, past broadcasts, that I've done and seeing if you like what you see hit the follow button you won't regret it see you then I've never actually entered the Konami code in my life and I probably never will the times of the G code are pretty much over Hey everyone, David here with a tech review. So some time ago, I actually did a review on these little like uh, grips that you get to fit the Joy-Cons into from the Nintendo Switch. And the video not only performed well, but I figured that it did for a lot of people what it was kind of doing for me was just to inform. Because I was right there with you. I was looking for grips for Joy-Cons. I figured, you know what, I'll put a review out there in the ether. And so many of you responded to it fairly well that now, since I got myself yet another Nintendo Switch uh, accessory that could potentially be one of the essentials to get if you're in the market for getting a Nintendo Switch. I figured I'll do a video on it. And it's going to be for the Gully Kit 10,000 milliamp power bank for the Switch. Now, this is a power bank for the Switch made by the brand Gully Kit that is mostly found uh, predominantly on Amazon. You can maybe go to their official website, but I think the easiest and most convenient way to buy it is through Amazon. And there's something kind of interesting about what you get exactly out of this power bank because you could easily go to the nearest Best Buy, to the nearest, um, I was going to say Radio Shack, but basically electronic store and find yourself a decent power bank that uses USB Type-C to connect to your Switch. Granted, there's two things that you need to note. One is exactly how you're going to be operating with this power bank when you're on the go because obviously when we're looking for power banks is because we know that we're going to be playing the Nintendo Switch mostly on handheld mode and we're going to be traveling a lot because we're not going to be near, near a power source to be able to charge it. The second thing is also that there are some power banks out there, not every single one of them, but there's an awful lot of buyer beware when it comes to the safety of certain power banks of how compatible they are with Nintendo Switch. The one company that Nintendo themselves actually kind of certified to work conveniently with the Switch is actually Anchor. So if you go out there and you find yourself a power bank by Anchor, they use USB Type-C, whether it be their traditional one, that's I think 20,000 20, milliamps, or the Nintendo branded one that's like $30 more just because of the fucking Nintendo Switch logo that's on it, that's 20,100 milliamps, you're you're in the safe zone, but also because you might not exactly be getting your best bang for your buck, especially if that thing's gonna be dangling right underneath. That was that, that was an innuendo there. I just thought it was kind of funny. So let's take a look at what you, exactly you get inside of the package when you order the Gully Kit and kind of break down the conveniences and one particular one that I think could change the game for me as a handheld game. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what you actually get inside of the box of the Gully Kit. This thing was really cute when it arrived in the mail. It's very quaint, very tiny and packed. Packaging, which is funny because this is actually about the actual size of the bank itself. You'll notice that there's actually a little bit of a red and white theme going on, even the top here with the Gully Kit logo, trying to mimic that of the official Nintendo Switch accessories licensed by Nintendo. Nothing going on on the sides, but then at the bottom you have another red panel with the listing of the features for the Gully Kit, but I don't know where this is necessarily imported from because the translation is kind of iffy. So if you want a quick laugh, go ahead and read that on your own time. It's really strange how they decided to translate these features, but I digress. Moving on to the back, you'll notice that you actually have three panels showcasing the instructions on how to apply the Gully Kit and everything included inside. So let's use our Marvel-themed keys to go ahead and remove the cellophane from the package itself. Now, upon removing it, you'll notice one particular thing, and that is that this whole Nintendo Switch official accessory design is applied to the sleeve, and when you remove it, you got the little cute brown box. Opening up like a cute little treasure trove, you're greeted with a little insert that kind of showcases Gully Kit's other accessories such as the Bluetooth receiver for the Switch. Then you got the top box that actually houses the Gully Kit power bank inside. So you're open up from one side and inside you got the Gully Kit battery wrapped up in a nice little plastic. 
to conceal it. Then moving on to the further contents of the box, you'll notice you got more boxes. Oh my god, it's like a Russian doll. But in the thinner one, you'll actually have a simple USB-C to A cable to power either the bank or another device. And then you got a much more medium box that will actually house the bracket that you use to apply the goalie kit to the Nintendo Switch. All right, so I got my Nintendo Switch here for demonstration purposes, and then we got everything that came inside of the box for the goalie kit right here. So as you saw, it came with a couple little extra things that will kind of get your gears going, thinking, wow, this might be a little different than those traditional power banks you might find in the store. For one, they throw in a convenient USB-C to A uh, cable to charge the power bank because obviously power banks need charging of their own and hence the Kuli kit here which comes in a decent sized package I know that the anchor ones can sometimes be a little bit longer depending on the milliamps I believe their 10,000 milliamp one is about the same size as this you got the Kuli kit logo there in the center on the back sides you see a little uh slight little panel right here that removes to show off the mounting capability of the Gully Kit, which I'll demonstrate in fuller detail later. And then, of course, some uh, little uh, fabric type pads here to protect against damage or scratching for the switch when you slide it on, as well as nothing really going on in the sides except for here at the top, you have actually a power button. Of course, this turns on the power bank, but it doesn't keep it on. It's more so of a way to check exactly where you're at in terms of power level here on the side. You got th four LED lights and it showcases exactly how much power you got left in the bank. And then next to the side, you got a USB-C uh, type connection as well as a USB-A uh, connector. Uh, the C is actually to charge the battery, obviously. It's ha it even has a little in symbol right at the bottom. The out is over on the A, USB-A, and that's to charge other devices besides your switch. So this is not exactly alienating other people for the sake of this just being an exclusive power bank for the switch so if you ever want to use this as a power bank to charge your cell phone any other kind of device that doesn't exceed the 20 the 10,000 milliamps you got yourself a little bit of a power bank here solution right there on the go then at the bottom you got the built-in type-c connection cable for the actual switch right there conveniently placed it's uh kind of locks itself in here as you kind of pop it in I will admit sometimes Removing it is no problem, but then putting it back in, well, I mean, right there, it kind of worked on the first try, but sometimes it would take some getting used to because there's a there's a little bit of a trick to make sure that the Type-C connection, that's like this little uh, cylindrical shape or like this little really thin oval shape as USB-C has uh, been now for the past few years, is a little finicky when it comes to fitting it inside of the Gully Kit. In terms of weight, it's actually not bad for 10,000 milliamps. It's actually rather convenient, but of course, it's a whole nother beast when you attach this sort of weight to the Nintendo Switch, especially during handheld mode, because it's something that you just don't take into account until you fully try it. So we're gonna go ahead and mount up the Gully Kit over to the Switch, which is the biggest draw for me personally when I came across it through reviews and insights over on YouTube, is the fact that this is a power bank you can take on the go with the, with the Nintendo Switch, which technically you can do with any power bank. But, say for example, you get one of those anchor ones, you gotta connect it here, sitting on the table, you're gaming, cool, oh, I gotta go, grab it, hold it with both of your hands. It's a bit of a hassle. Just bump the mic here. That's how much of a hassle it really could potentially be. Depending on who you are, you know, some people might not mind it, but for convenience sake, the big draw about the Gully Kit is that you can actually mount it to the back of the Switch and take it with you on the go and still keep both hands on the wheel or on the Joy-Cons per se, so you can keep gaming. And to do so, you would have to use the little mounting brackets that came, or the little mounting bracket that came with the Gully Kit, which is what you see right here. You simply snap it onto the switch, and it's pretty easy to do. You got two holes here at the bottom, uh, right on both sides of the USB-C connection to charge the switch. You also got two circular pegs right at the bottom of the bracket. So all you gotta do is just line them up right there, and simply just snap the top, and you're good to go. Now, forewarned, be careful when removing this bracket in case you ever need to, because you simply just have to repeat the process or reverse the process to take it off. It's just that I, ever so often I find it kind of iffy. Yeah, like right there I didn't do it, but sometimes I feel like the top clamp, the little sharp edge at the top of this clamp here of the bracket can sometimes 
grab hold of the vents that you have here at the top. So if you're not smooth with it, you could risk, you know, cutting deep, especially if there, there's a little bit of a separation here on this back panel between this back panel and this top piece here. So uh, I would say be very gentle when taking it off. You know, snapping it on is pretty easy, but removing it like right there, look that right there. I'm just demonstrating right now. I don't want to risk damaging it, but it locks in right there. And that could risk damaging either the sides of the vents or the plastic uh, in between these two pieces here that form the Switch uh, tablet console. But there you have the bracket. It simply just covers up the Nintendo logo. It doesn't cover up anything else. You even have little cutouts for the remaining uh, vents that you ha that have down here at the bottom so it can still breathe. Then you take the goalie kit, remove the panel that it comes with pre-installed just for the sake of formalities. Take it off. Now you have this slide here. All you got to do is just line up the arrow that's in the middle of the goalie kit to that of the switch here or the bracket. And you press it all the way down until you hear a pop. And there you have it. Now you have the goalie kit mounted to the back of the switch. It is there where you're going to have to determine for yourself if this is too heavy for you. For me personally, yes, it adds a little bit of weight, but not enough to make it a deal breaker. I can still game this way Sure, this does do a couple of things. One, it adds weight. And again, that's going to be purely subjective depending on who you are. The second thing it does, however, is that it does completely eliminate certain accessories out there. For one, grips. Grips for Switch and handheld modes, specifically the Skull Candy ones. I mean, not the Skull Candy. Skull and Company ones. Skull Candy. Earphone Company. Skull and Company ones. Or the Satisfy Grip, the big seller over on Amazon. Uh, the big one with the uh, asymmetrical grip on this side. Forget about those. Because now you have this thing on the back. You're not going to have any grips. Unless they find a way to make individual. And I think they actually do sell them. But there might be some individual Joy-Con grips that are on this way. Not the ones that I reviewed. Not the ones that are from Fastnail. That are meant to have a firmer grip when you have the Joy-Cons here on the sideway form. When you split them up and you want to play with a second player locally. No. I'm talking about a grip that's like this. Unless there's a way to pop one in like this and pop one in like that. And I do believe that they're out there. I don't think that that's a brand new thing. I think that's we're at that point. But that's what you're going to have to spend some extra money on if you already got a grip and you were thinking about getting this uh, this goalie kit uh, power bank. But now you got to get rid of that grip because it's going to be strapped along the side here. And that's obviously not going to happen. This also eliminates particular cases. Case in point. That was not a point. That was not a pun. Sorry. That was terrible. <laughs> but here I have a brand new case that I got recently. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I believe it's the RDS Industries uh, case. I can't remember if it was. Anyways, we got a traditional case here for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, and has your traditional spacing inside for not only the Switch and handheld mode. But also a couple of accessories in the packet. Anyways, that's not what this video is about. You take the Switch with the goalie kit. Place it there. And as you can see, it's it's not going to do it. And this is my bulkier one. I have another one from Insignia, which is the Best Buy store brand. It's even slimmer. And if it's not going to fit in this one, it's definitely not going to fit in that smaller one. So as you can see, you're going to have to look out there, uh, look for some cases that are a little bit thicker, can afford to include a power bank, whether it be mounted or not. I believe that Satisfy Grip, there's an elite version of that bundle that comes with the case. And I believe the elite version of that case is thick enough to be able to uh, maybe have something like this. Obviously, I haven't tested it on myself because I haven't gotten it yet, but you're going to have to expand your horizons in terms of cases if you want to be able to p carry this thing around with the Gully Kit power bank. Of course, you have the option to remove the bank, store this someplace else in your backpack, in your laptop bag, anything, and still keep the bracket attached. And in this form, it'll still fit in certain cases. Uh, it'll definitely fit in my Breath of the Wild one and the Insignia one. It does kind of warp a little bit of the sides of the case here on the outer rim, but for the most part, it still fits even with accessories in the other pouch. Now, I'm not one for throwing shade at other YouTubers and things like that, but I do feel like I maybe need to disclose one thing that this Gully Kit power bank, while mounted, does not do that I've heard some other people or at least one particular reviewer out there say does, and I'm like... No, it doesn't. I did see a rumbling, a little bird uh, tweeting out there saying that this power bank blocks the speakers. And I even saw, I think, one review say the exact same thing over on Amazon while I was checking out the written reviews. It doesn't do that. It, it does not do that. And it's because the speakers for the Switch in handheld mode are actually these two little slits here on the front 
of the panel down here at the bottom where you see these little cutouts those are the speakers the top portions uh, here cut out at the very top of the of the tablet as well as the ones that i demonstrated at the bottom here that have also cutouts within the brackets here at the bottom these are vents for the switch to breathe and i know this because i played the switch turned up the volume with a loudish game and I covered these up to see if they would be affected and I didn't hear any difference in speaker quality. Then I covered these and then that's where the speaker quality went down. So if you were worried by some reviews or some people out there saying that it blocks the speakers, that's not what their speakers are. So I don't know what exactly they were using or maybe they applied it wrong, but you don't have to worry about that. In any event, maybe you do have to be slightly concerned with the venting that's going down here at the bottom. Nothing at the top. It even has cutouts on the bracket for the top vent here. But the ones at the bottom here uh, generally are the smaller ones. And they still have cutouts for them to breathe. But I guess if you're in some kind of closed off area and being that you have this giant milliamp power bank here kind of blocking it. I guess you kind of have to orient, orient it. Orient yourself, orientate yourself in a manner where it's like, okay, you got to remember that the Switch has to breathe, especially if you're playing a very powerhouse game like Breath of the Wild or Super Mario Odyssey. Now, as far as performance, which is obviously the main thing that you want to look out for, for a power bank. So, obviously, you pull this out, you plug it into the underside of the Switch, and it turns on. And not only does the screen turn on and it shows you that it's charging, but you also got the lights on the side of the, the Gully Kit power bank to show you exactly where it's at in terms of power percentage. Now, how it fares off, because this is a 10,000 milliamp battery, and you got yourself some other ones out there, especially from Anchor that are like 20,000. It does fairly well to keep my Switch alive for a week. And when I say that, I mean in a very average way when it comes to an average gamer playing the Switch. What I mean by that is that it, the Gully Kit alone, on the 10,000 milliamps at a full charge, was able to give me two full charges for the Switch, meaning I was able to give it about 90% of its power back in two charges. So I charged the Gully Kit power bank to its fullest, so having all four of those lights light up. And then I had the Switch drain itself. I played it in handheld mode as much as I could so I can get it to either 5 to 10% bat battery left. And the only reason why I cut it off there is only because I was playing a game. And, of course, I got myself invested. So I wanted to make sure that I got to a point where I saved the progress. And I didn't want to play any more than I needed to only to lose that progress. You know what I'm saying? So I play to about 5 to 10% uh, percentage of the switch, uh, Switch's power. Connected the, the Gully Kit and I gave it one charge, depleted half of the Gully Kit's uh, power bank, and that charged it from 5 to 10 percent all the way to 100 percent. Then I drained out the switch again, did it once more, only this time the Gully Kit was completely drained out and I had to recharge it with either this cable or frankly any Type C cable they have laying around, plug it up against the wall, and give it its full power back. So that averaged at about maybe five or six hours of extra battery life. I know that maybe the box says something kind of different. Aha! Working time, 8 to 12 hours, tested under 30% luminance. I tested the, I tested this bitch under 100% luminance. I wanted to make sure that my review was going to be at its fullest power, so I cranked this switch screen up to 100% and make sure that it was working under the most stressful conditions because that's the best way. Otherwise, you know, from there it can only get better. Of course, there's certain aspects of the uh, of which game you're playing and in which environment you're even playing it at because there were certain times where I was playing in the in my car during lunchtime at work and it was rather hot and the heat of the environment can also affect the switch and ca case in point was the fact that my switch its vents were going crazy in that environment whereas I went home played the exact same game in the exact same amount but the event but the vents weren't working overtime like they were before so they weren't draining as much power so obviously, the game that you're playing and the environment they're in are going to be major factors in how exactly that um, that power is being drained from the Gully Kit. But on an average, and I did this at least twice within one week, I tested it out twice with that same kind of method. And it did the exact same thing. It gave me about five or so hours out of that power bank on two full charges to prolong my life of the Switch without ever docking it or connecting it to a wall power source. As far as other devices, like say a cell phone, again, you do have the USB-A connection right there. So you can either use this to charge some kind of uh, USB-C 
powered device like um, one of the more recent phones like the iPhone 10 or the Google Pixel 3 as well as other devices that can take this A but then maybe the other end is a micro USB what have you you can charge devices I didn't test out every single device except maybe my phone and I was able to give it 50% on about a third ish I want to say it was definitely more than a quart, but a, a quart, but about a third ish or so of the power bank. I was able to give 50% back to my fo my phone, or maybe it was like 60 percent. So I didn't fully test another device, but it was able to give it another charge for at least another day. And that's just for my phone. Of course, your phones are going to vary. But some of the more high-profile phones, like the iPhones and the Google Pixels and the Samsungs, are going to require better. Uh, better power devices so i know that this review is now going on a little bit long but i just wanted to drive the point across that the gully kit's main attractive factor would be the bracket and the fact that it mounts to your switch and you're able to game on the go and prolong its life like i said you give it about another five maybe six or seven hours depending on how heavy the game is and what which environment you are at but it's able to keep the gaming going and at least give you an out so that you can get to another source so you can charge the Google kit or charge the switch and just find you know if you ever find yourself in that precarious situation where you still need the charge but you're right in the middle of the game the Google kit is a very good way to solve that issue now i understand there's probably way better power banks out there ever so often i still look at that uh anchor the 20,000 milliamp one that's like a stretch like this so i can give it a full charge and prolong its life even further but it was this mounting mechanism that has me in love with the Gully Kit enough to recommend it for any Switch user. But you do need to know ahead of time that you need to kind of... You need to accommodate yourself for the accessories that you might be cutting out of your gaming lifestyle when it came when it comes to using a case or using a grip. But at least I can verify that this thing does not break your switch because it's one of the major concerns for power banks hooking up to the switch gold kit can be almost considered another certified one that nintendo should definitely consider putting that seal of approval from nintendo so anyways i give the gold kit a very high 8 out of 10 would have been a 9 would have been an excellent essential accessory for any switch user but it is that whole lim limiting factor of which cases and which accessories you can really use with the switch in this mode that m could or could not be some deal breakers for some people so anyways that does it for my review thank you guys so much for watching make sure you like and share this video check out my instagram twitter and twitch accounts in the links in the description below and i'll see you guys all on the next one take care